Hello, I'm in Howarth today and I'm at the railway station down at the bottom of the hill and I'm going to travel the steam train today. Obviously the railway played a big part in the Brontes' lives, Bramwell worked for them and the Brontes used them on a regular basis to travel so let's jump on a train and see what it's like to travel by the miracle of steam. Howarth didn't get their own station until 1867 and it brought many tourists to this corner of Yorkshire to visit the parsonage in the village. But a hundred years later there were cuts made all over the UK's railway network and the station was closed. A short time later the Keithley and Worth Valley Preservation Society took on the line and is now run between Oxenhope and Keithley and is run more like it would have been done in its heyday. So I'm stood on the platform waiting for the train and I kind of feel really excited. I mean, it's crazy really. I mean, this would have been a norm for the Brontes to jump on the steam train to go here, there and everywhere. But for me, it's been a long time since I've been on a steam train. And a lovely chap's just come up to me and talked to me about the, um, the train and where to go and everything. And I can feel this little bubble of excitement. I'm going on a steam train from Howard Station. How exciting! Now the sun's come out and I can't see. So I'm on the steam train at last and the sun's come out so it's a beautiful day. So did you know that Charlotte Bronte had a first train ride in 1837 with Ellen Nussey? They went to Bridlington on the train so that it was the London to Selby line um, and the train went through a tunnel which was one of the first, first tunnels for steam trains to go through. Here's a tunnel now. Couldn't have that better, could I? So can you imagine how it would have felt first time on a steam train? You've heard all these rumours about how fast they go and the effect it has on women and all the rest of it. And they got the chance to go on one. But I can imagine Charlotte took it in a stride because she was pretty good like that. Anyway, let's see where we stop next. The other thing I forgot to mention is in Charlotte's time there would have been no platform um, so it was very much climb up and down and it wasn't very comfortable because a lot of the tracks were on stone so it was very bumpy and I can imagine very cold as well in the winter so I'm not sure whether or not she would have enjoyed the train journey but the speed would have been amazing you know how quickly she could have get somewhere compared to horse and carriage so yeah I'm so nice on the train So I'm in Oakworth, which is the first stop down from Howarth on the way to Keithley. And 
It is the location for the railway station in The Railway Children from that 1970s film. Now, I grew up on that film. I absolutely loved it, everything about it. And so I was really excited to come here just to see where it was filmed. And it's like stepping back in time. It's beautiful. It's kept so lovely. So I wanted to give you a quick look at it so you too can pretend that you're Bobby in The Railway Children and that Mr Perks is about to come in at any minute and serve you a big pot of tea. So. It's lovely. I'm in the ladies' waiting room. Sorry, I've got so distracted. I'm in the ladies' waiting room at the station, which was quite a common thing in stations where women could come, they would sit, keep warm, keep dry. Obviously, there's a fire here. And um, because stations were quite windy, <laughs> and when you're wearing your big skirt with your petticoats, the last thing you want is everything taken off. And there's also a bathroom, ladies' toilet, just off the waiting room as well. So it kept everything a little bit private it's lovely here. There's a little tea cart which I think I'm going to go and investigate or tea hut. And I think a cup of Yorkshire tea might be in need. It's quite a cold windy day now so yeah wouldn't go amiss but I will show you around the, the station because if you're a fan like me oh, it hasn't changed at all. It's just like it was in the film so all right come and have a look. Right Mr Perks you can come in with my tea now. Thank you. <laughs> We can't talk about the railway without touching on Bramwell's connection to this new form of transport. In 1840, Bramwell landed a job on the Manchester and Leeds Railway as an assistant clerk in charge at Sowerby Bridge Station, earning £75 per annum, which was paid quarterly. In today's money, that's about £9,500. Then in 1841, he became clerk in charge at Ludford Station, with a salary increase to £130 per year, which is about £16,500 in today's money. In 1842, Bramwell was dismissed due to a deficit in the accounts of £11, one shilling and seven pence, just under £1,500 in today's money. This had probably been stolen by Watson, the porter, who was left in charge when Bramwell was out, whether that be for a walk or for a drink, we don't know. This was attributed to incompetence rather than theft, and the missing sum was deducted from his salary and Bramwell returned to Haworth. So I'm in Ingro West, one of the stations um, along the railway line, um, one stop from Keithley. And I stopped into the museum and they have all these carriages from different periods in time. This one is about 1923, so far too late for the Brontes, but I feel quite glamorous in it. This is first class and you can see, you know, it's quite plush. I keep thinking of things like Murder on the Orient Express and things like that. So carriages would have been cold and noisy and of course you've got a door one side and the other side for different stations, different platforms, very similar to now but of course you couldn't travel along a corridor to get to the different carriages, you would come in one end, sit yourself down and head off again. So here I am in my carriage, where shall I go? <laughs> So this is the oldest carriage they have here, 1879. So this is probably as close as we can get to what it would have been like for the Bronte sisters. Um, again, you've got this single room almost with the door either end for getting out of stations, but no central corridor like what we're used to. This is second class. 
So you've got leather seats, basket hangers, wooden floor, curtains, so that's not so bad, but compared to next door, you've got velvet seats, almost like individual seats. Um, you know, you can see the difference, but it's still very nice. And if anything, it's better than second class or normal standard class carriage here in the UK nowadays. So I quite happily travel like this. This is lovely. So I'm obviously in the carriage that best suits me because it matches my outfit. But this is first class from about um, 1898. So again, too late for the Brontes. But I could definitely travel like this. These beautiful armchairs, leather, bit of space. Again, it's the one room almost with the door either end for getting off at each station, no central corridor. But I quite like this idea. It's very private. Um, but of course it means you don't have anyone with any food or drink trolley coming through. Um, the other thing this first class little carriage has is its very own toilet. Um, I don't know if I like the idea of going to the loo literally right behind this person here, but um, you know, in an emergency, I could quite happily do this. And I must say, this toilet has a lovely view, plenty of space, and um, a pulley handle for flushing. So, you know, the railway certainly came a long way from those drafty old carriages at the beginning. So where should we go now? I'm thinking, let's join Charlotte and Ellen in Bridlington. And did you know this carriage only went out of use in 1950? Can you believe that? to Bridlington please driver. And what I didn't show you, look at the hand basin, right? How cool is that? So simple. Water goes in and as you tip it up, it tips down the drain. Gosh, us Brits were so good at innovation. I can't believe it. Brilliant. Keithley Railway Station didn't open until March 1847, so until then the Brontes would get a gig, which is like a two-wheel carriage, from their home in Haworth to Leeds to catch a train. It would take about two hours to travel the approximate 20 miles in a gig from Haworth to Leeds, whereas the walk from Haworth to Keithley would take about an hour and a half. This new station gave them the independence and the freedom to travel. Aunt Bramwell held chairs in the York and Midland Railway and when she died in 1842, she'd left her shares to the three sisters and a cousin. At the 
time, men had a better chance of making their own money and their aunt was aware that her beloved nephew Bramwell was able to do this. As an unmarried woman herself, she knew the sisters would need all the help they could get. In April 1845, Charlotte wrote, Emily has made herself mistress of the necessary degree of knowledge for conducting the matter by dint of careful reading every paragraph and every advertisement in the newspaper that relates to the railroads and, as we have abstained from all gambling and all mere speculative buying in and selling out, we have got on very decently. Decently and thankful enough for all three sisters to contribute one pound to the George Hudson's to testimonial fund as listed in the Railway Times on September the 27th, 1846, it was Charlotte's publisher, George Smith, who ensured she avoided the worst problem of the crash. In 1847, Charlotte wrote to George Smith, who ensured she avoided the worst problem of the crash. Writing to her old friend and former teacher, Mrs. Wooler, she wrote, The business is certainly very bad, worse than I thought, and much worse than my father had any idea of. In fact, the little railway property I possessed, scarcely any portion of it can be secured by calculated on. When I look at my own case and compare it with that of thousands beside, I scarcely see room for a murmur. Many, very many are, by the late strange railway system, deprived almost of their daily bread. Not long after Charlotte's first train journey, Emily and Anne went to York on the train. York had started to become a go-to destination for travellers with its shops, historic buildings, river and, of course, the York Minster. They would have travelled from Leeds and during this time the York station was outside the city walls. It was in 1841 that the central station was opened allowing tourists direct access into the city centre. Can you imagine how exciting this was for them? York must have seemed huge compared to Haworth. So I've just got off the train and walking back up the hill and I thought I'd have a little stop to tell you about one of the train journeys that Charlotte and Anne took. So in July 1848, uh, Charlotte and Anne did a mad dash to London because they'd received a letter from their publisher and there was some confusion over who wrote, rock, who wrote what book and that everyone was getting a bit upset and confused. So Charlotte made the decision they should go up there and see them face to face, straighten it out. But of course, Emily didn't want to go, as we know. So Charlotte and Anne went from Keithley to Leeds on the second class train, or carriage, I should say, and then from Leeds to London via first class. That cost on one way for both of them was about equivalent to £500 now. And that would have been about three quarters of an annual wage for a governess. Can you imagine that? what a cost to get to London, that's how much it meant to them to, to straighten out all the business over publishing and whose name and everything like that. So it was quite a jolly to get there. Um, they also went at night on the night train so they could be there for 8am ready to for when the doors opened to be able to say no, you've got this all wrong, this is, this is really who we are, this is who wrote what book. So can you imagine that? jumping on the train, travelling through the night, how cold and dark and horrible it must have been. I mean, it was July, so hopefully it would have been not so bad, but um, it's June here at the moment, and you wouldn't believe it, because it's cold and it's rained and it's wet. 
So there you go, that was another adventure that the sisters took on train. Thank you for joining me on this railway adventure today. I must say thank you to Keithley and Worth Valley Railway, not just for helping me with some information about the railway, but for preserving a bit of history. All the volunteers that help from driving the trains to working in the gift shop need recognition for their hard work, so thank you. Um, I've put some information about them in the description below, so go and check it out. But also, I really recommend having a look at the live webcam of the trains going in and out of the stations. It kept me and my daughter entertained for ages. If you liked today's video, please do the whole likey subscribe thing because it lets YouTube know we want to watch more Bronte content and it really does help me out. I'll see you next Friday for more Bronte adventures. Bye!